So you have a young runner, Amy, and she's doing very well. She's winning, and she's getting awards and all that kind of stuff. She's doing very well, and she's enjoying it. And her mother is glad that she has something productive to put her energy into. And Amy gets this idea in her head that uh, that she can run faster if she weighed less. Kind of makes sense, you know. So she starts dieting, except dieting means severely restricting her calories. At the same time, she also starts training more. She runs more, and she's adding more um, resistance training and all that kind of stuff to get better, to get better at her sport because she's dedicated to her sport and she wants to get better at running. So, an effort, you know, it's all good. She's still she's still doing well, and she's still um, getting awards and winning races and other kind of stuff. But she starts to notice that she's tired a lot and a lot for someone her age and more than she had ever been before you know more consistently tired than she had been before and but she kind of brushes it off because she still wants to get better in her sport and she thinks that this is the right direction to go. So she continues on and doesn't really say anything. Powers through. Considers herself a trooper and tough and all that kind of stuff. But then after a while she loses her period. She er, she gets um, menstrual irregularities. She loses her period. But again, she didn't think that big a deal. She keeps going. Um, because, hey, one less thing I have to worry about. I guess. <laughs> yeah. And so, she keeps going. But she starts to not do as well. She stops running as many races she stops she she is slower actually um because she can't she just can't keep up um with the paces that she had set before and it starts to get really frustrated because she's still tired a lot she can't keep up with her paces she's not she's just not doing as well as she was before and she doesn't understand why but she thinks maybe she's just in a slump whatever but then one day after a meet she comes limping off the track and her coach is like what's going on what why are you limping? She's, she's, oh, it's no big deal. I'm fine. I'm fine. Coach says, no, you're not fine. Why are you, why are you limping like this? And why, you know, you were, you know, you were doing better before you're not meeting your times. What's going on? And so Amy goes to the doctor to get her ankle looked at and some things checked out. Well, the doctor comes back with the x-rays and she has a stress fracture in her foot and ankle. And then the doctor starts asking some questions and then Amy starts talking about her menstrual irregularities and missing periods. Um, but a pregnancy test comes back negative so and the doctor starts doing some more investigations 
and starting asking Amy about her dietary habits and Amy starts talking about how she started restricting calories and stuff like that. Well, the stress factor was because of low bone density because she's not getting enough calcium because she's not eating correctly. Because cutting back calories means she's also reducing her nutrients. And she's not fueling her training because not only was she cutting back on calories, she was increasing her training. So, it's all, and, and, and the doctor explains it's all tied together. What this is, is the female athlete triad. So what Amy did was she started restricting her calories and then on top of that increasing her training. But she wasn't fueling her training. And because of that, she wasn't getting the nutrients that she needed. She wasn't getting the calories and the energy that she needed. So that's why she started having menstrual irregularities and missing periods. And with that is um, it disrupts the hormones. So low estrogen, progesterone, and that means that bone density suffers. So you have lower bone density. She also wasn't getting enough calcium either because of the dietary restrictions. So low bone density. That's what led to the stress fracture. And it because of all of that and the feeling tired, um, she wasn't getting enough energy. She wasn't getting enough fuel. So this is what's called again, the female athlete tries. So you have, um, it starts with that um, insufficient energy, that um, not, that dietary restrictions and not fueling properly. Then that spirals into the low bone density or osteoporosis and also um, what's called amenorrhea or la lack of periods, lack of menstruation and or menstrual irregularities. So what Amy needs to understand is that she needs to fuel her trainer. So how she could have avoided all of this was to have proper fueling and make sure that she was getting the right uh, the right amount of energy, the right amount of calories, and the right amount of nutrients and all that kind of stuff and proper rest and recovery. So that is how to not get to this place to how to avoid the female athlete triad is with proper fueling and that can also help avoid falling into eating disorders and things like that but and that's why it's very important to properly fuel your training and if you're going to increase your training you need to make sure that you you're still getting the proper amount of fuel or the proper fuel uh, to match that training and to balance everything out. Because if you don't, problems like this can arise. So that would be, that's what Amy should have thought of, should have thought about before trying to lose weight to get faster is that 
is that fuel is important. So, that is the FEMA athlete triad and how to avoid it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it and learned something today. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe and ring that bell icon so you don't miss the next video. And remember, train hard and stay inspired. And I'll see you next time.